So I know this, you folks have been sitting a long time, but I, I'm going to make you sit just a little bit longer because <laughs> a new friend of mine is here today and she's going to want to say a few words to you. And uh, how did we become friends? Well, I kind of went to maybe a town hall or a community meeting of hers and I kind of pointed out that as a U.S. representative, she should know that um, there's some really bad stuff going on with Medicare Advantage and that you maybe shouldn't sign on to a letter written by the insurance industry every year praising Medicare Advantage, which to her defense, every single member of the congressional de delegation from Minnesota signed it every year. So I did that twice. I showed up to her events and she was very gracious, even though I was not a constituent. She let me talk and uh, I think she really took it to heart. And the uh, last time I told her, she actually did kind of thank me for standing up for that one. So Representative Omar, could you come up? Thank you, David. Good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody doing? Good, good. Well, I am thrilled to be here with you all. It's good to see Rose um, and so many friends, my predecessor, Keith Ellison, our Attorney General. Um, I was thinking about a few things when Keith was speaking, um, and, and one of it is, yes, it's exciting that we're celebrating 50 years. Um, of the anniversary of Medicare. Uh, but Kip reminded us that the success of this public program um, and the investments that it created has been both silently and loudly been chipped away, where now 50% of Medicare beneficiaries are on private insurance. And so the reminder that I got from that um, in, in what Keith was saying is that no matter how much progress that we make, unless we are willing to protect that progress, it is going to regress. And for many of us elected into office, we are only as vigilant and able to do our jobs as much as our constituents and the people we serve are. And even though David is not a constituent of mine, what has been really helpful in him, not only coming to one, but maybe few, uh, of my town halls over the years, is that constant reminder that it might be easy to look at uh, a communique and say, okay, this makes sense without looking of the overall impact it will have, which we oftentimes are guilty of, it might be easy to say, you know, maybe this is the small step. And I see some of the state reps from Minnesota here. This might be as easy step forward without thinking that this step forward might actually be historically three steps back. And that is the trap that many members of Congress and many of the people that represent you get into. Because 90% of the time, the conversations that we are having is through our colleagues and is through lobbyists and special interest. So when your colleague comes to you and says, the whole delegation is on this letter, you don't want to be the only Minnesota not on it. It becomes easier to just say, oh, I don't wanna fight about this. There's 500 other things I'm gonna wa I might want to fight about. Let me say yes. Until the Davids of the world show up and say, no, really? <laughs> <laughs> if you actually stand for single payer, Medicare for all, this is not the letter you sign on to, right? 
And that is, those are the kind of reminders that make us a better representative. I know many people shy away from doing that. So showing up here today, you're like, no, I don't. <laughs> um, so thank you for showing up here today. Thank you for recognizing this historic moment, but thank you for not forgetting that we have not made the kind of progress to protect this once in a lifetime investment. And in order for us to make it right, we all have to collectively be engaged in this fight, be vigilant, pay attention to every single proposal that is coming down the pipeline, and inform your members of Congress or those adjacent. I think I don't represent most of you here if you, if you live in this area or in the uh, surrounding areas. I wish you do. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it doesn't mean because your representative is not signed on and has not bought in that you don't have people like me who will fight for it. And as Minnesotans, it's still a win um, for, for all of us. So I just want to leave that I want to leave that with you all. And I think more importantly, I sit on the Education and Labor Committee, where many of these discussions take place. Uh, and so when there is an issue, um, please know that you have uh, an attentive ear and a compassionate heart that's willing to fight for the interest of all of us. So thank you. Thank you.